Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. So, I went to go load up the uh, Deimos 4-2, which was the uh, sister mission to our now successful Mars landing. And upon loading it, it exploded. Uh, presumably due to overheating. Which, this is not the first time this has happened in this uh, playthrough. I lost a flight to Mercury. I think I lost something else. Just due to random things exploding. And uh, my last quick save was uh, a while ago. Um, yeah, everything just exploded due to overheating. All at the same time. Wow, this makes me really mad. But, um, I don't know. I'm still riding on this high of... I just landed something on Mars, and while I'm disappointed that I won't also be able to take something to Deimos and hopefully also Phobos this year, I'm not entirely heartbroken because I don't have a contract to do it anyway. It's not like I was going to get paid, although there is the expenditure of the mission, which is now pretty much lost. I'm, uh, I'm kind of willing just to eat this one. So that I can get uh, upward and onward with um, the next flights that I had planned, which will generate some money. So I'm going to jump back to the Space Center and uh, take care of a few logistical things, and I will see all of you in just a few short minutes. Alright, so we are out on the launch pad again. This is a DN-1A, and this is our Rove 2 mission to kind of test the feasibility of rovers on... Uh, other planetary bodies. We're sending this one just kind of as a small test flight to the moon. Um, I do have some contracts to radio and science from around Earth, around the moon, and from the surface of the moon, although none of them are going to recoup the cost of this flight. So, uh, main in engine ignition sequence start, and by the time I get through the sentence they're already lit, so we've got the clamps off and we are going. Now this is just a standard D1A. It does not have the E1 advanced on the boosters, which is why we're kind of uh, nice and easy here coming off the pad. And um, yeah, so I made some small tweaks and adjustments to the rover itself. Nothing major, but we'll get to more about the rover itself a little later. Uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and get this little guy to orbit and uh, get our transfer to the moon plotted out, and I will pick you guys up then. So, see you in just a few minutes. All in all, the uh, launch went uh, flawlessly. No engine failures, nothing interesting to report. Booster stuff was clean. Uh, the package here is actually a little bit lighter than I think anything that we've sent to Mars or anything like that. So, transfer came swift, and we actually had some fuel left in that main tank. I would just prefer to let it deorbit. All right, and that makes an orbit 235 by 154, or a little skinny on the periapsis side, but uh, I did not want to carry that big booster stage with us. Uh, it makes reorienting very difficult, and uh, we just needed a little tap from those RL-10s to uh, get us entirely out of the atmosphere. Um, but so I'm going to go ahead and plot for the moon and get warped around to the node, and I, once again, pick you guys up in just a few minutes. All right, and now it's time to start ulging our engines. Very risky, risky, stable, very stable. Ignition. Come off those thrusters just a bit. Oh, good. All four of them have lit. And, uh, I don't know. Maneuver node was being a little fickle on me. Um, it just uh, did not like me getting closer than 10 million uh, meters from the moon. Uh, I have just plotted the maneuver node to get us to about that range, and I will tweak it a little further out. We have a massive excess of Delta V on this flight. Um, I had considered putting this on an RA-9, but uh, I had just scrapped DN-1A from a backup flight that didn't fly, so I was able to put this together in like 20 days, which was nice. Uh, a little bit more expensive, but uh, the added Delta V is very welcome here as uh, the RA-9 being able to put something to the moon that can land itself, it starts to get a little shaky. Even with the HV upper stage, it just doesn't... it doesn't deliver very well when you're trying to put that much Delta V to the moon. Um, our rover comes in itself at uh, a, 
a little under a ton. With the landing mechanism for it, the total weight's about 1.9 tons, so it's not a huge, uh, heavy thing that we're trying to cart off to the moon. Although, trying to build with the mission parameters, thinking that uh, hopefully one day we'll be sending something very similar to Mars, was uh, kind of the intention of this flight, and just to see how all the numbers translated down once it's uh, it's up and under the rocket, although obviously this flight lacks things like a uh, heat shield for aero braking that it would need at Mars, a lot of uh, a lot more Delta V on the landing stage itself, and possibly some parachutes to aid it in its uh, descent. But we're probably going to go ahead and speed through this burn. I'm just kind of admiring the view here, as I am often prone to do. That's not bad, really. Kind of like that. Alright, well. Enough of the uh, <laughs> rambling incessantly. Let's just go ahead and get this underway, shall we? Alright. Well, our periapsis is not ideal. Um, currently, uh, before accounting for boil off, we've got 1800 meters per second left in this stage that we can play with. So I'm going to play with it by smashing it into the moon once we get there. So uh, let's just go ahead and get this uh, wait. First things first, let's make sure our antennas are deployed. We're going to need those. Yep, okay, antenna on the rover is deployed. Antennas on the transfer stage are not. Let's go ahead and pop those out. Activate, activate. How, what's our charge looking like? We are showing a drain, but we got lots of battery. Uh, I guess I could just roll and get the rest of these panels into the sun here. There we go. So, no, yep, all right, we are charging. Good, good, good. And that's even better because we've got this ridiculously high draw, draw core down here at the bottom. All right, uh, you guys are probably RCSing us out of this nice orbit we have. And our transfer time is only about two days, which uh, is great for our boil off. Even though these are cryogenic balloon tanks, we should still hopefully have some liquid hydrogen left in there by the time we get here. I know I could be making this correction a lot sooner. I uh, just the node systems being extra fickle with. Uh, my encounter here with the moon and considering I've got the Delta V to spare I'm just gonna go ahead and throw it into the wind here's our SOI change there it is alright so I'm just going to yep there it is set a node to give me some idea of orientation here I'll we'll probably be going by this chart to determine uh, what altitude we're actually at but yeah, we're going to go ahead and set for a collision course just so we can get rid of that stage, but a pretty mild one. So get ourselves turned in. This is only 40 some odd meters per second. So maybe we'll, I don't know, maybe we'll actually slam <laughs> this uh, HV upper stage into the moon a lot harder than we intend to. Either way, doesn't matter. All right. Mm. I should have had my... Oh, you know what I really should do is shut down two of these engines. So that we're not going at this all balls-to-the-wall-like. Yeah, how much Delta V did we lose after two days? Uh, about 700 meters per second. A little, a little less, give or take. Alright. Ullage. Very stable. Light them up. Alright. I'm just going to let that go a little negative. There we go. And we will decouple. Oh, no. I should... Dang it. Ugh. That was dumb. I should have turned around first. Why are my thrusters not firing? Oh, no. All right, well, let's unlock the rest of these tanks. This is a problem. Y 
Yeah, RCS is on. All right, well, that engine's working. All right, well, let's unlock the tanks here on the, what was intended to be the descent stage. All right, and we need to get ourselves facing the other way. Make a couple of quick taps here on the thrusters, get us clear of that stage. All right, that should do that. Activate our engine here. What are we showing? Very stable? Okay, uh, just too bad the thrusters are not very stable. That's what these were here for, but I guess I forgot to configure them. All right, there's our engine light. Oh, yeah, 79 kilometers. Seems fairly reasonable. And at least we know we can ullage the engine with uh, these thrusters here. Oh, I should be facing into retrograde, shouldn't I? We're just going to have to remember to top off the fuel in this thing before we ditch it. Although I guess it might not matter as much as I think it will. Because we're probably going to have so much left in this stage that we can deorbit with it. Whereas this was intended to deorbit and land. So hopefully this little bit of fuel being consumed by these thrusters right now isn't going to be a huge deal. Alright, add maneuver. That's in about 15 hours. Well, it's going to put us in a nice low orbit because we would like to come down on the sunny side of the moon. I should be... I should focus in on the moon. <laughs> Although now I'm scared to click anywhere. No, yeah, see? Yeah. No, I don't want to do any of that. I just want to focus on the moon. Thank you. That's going to make uh, plotting things a little easier. That'll bring us down to 62 at our lowest point. Uh, anywhere here in the sun, I'm planning for landing somewhere here in the lunar seas where it's nice and flat. And maybe we can drive from the lunar seas onto some of this more rugged terrain and give this uh, lander doohickey, rover doohickey thing, a, a solid attempt at uh, doing stuff. So let's go ahead and just get ourselves into orbit. So, yeah, I, I didn't think we were going to be able to see our transfer stage hit the moon, but it was worth taking a look, right? Yeah, and it should very well be on our its impact trajectory by now. Well, uh, oh yeah, it's it's already gone. Good enough. All right, well, we're just uh, waiting to fall in line for our maneuver node here. I forgot to do radio science in from space around Earth. Man, that was like a freebie, and I totally just let it slide. All right, well, let's get ourselves rotated in. Stable, very stable. Ignition. All right. So, and in the meantime, I'm going to hit a radio in from our lander. Not going to give us anything new, but uh, it's worth getting a contract. Although, man, the communitrons are taking forever. All right, radio science in from space high. It pays us out about 11 grand. Not bad. That uh, almost covers the cost of just the rover. We Cover the cost of the rocket, we need to do that about nine more times. <laughs> uh, it's, it's awesome being a uh, really poor space program and having a terrible reputation of things. So every little bit helps. Alright, well, I will probably uh, speed through some of this burn, but that's some fairly nice eye candy. I like it. All right, let's get this done. All 
All right, I'm going to call it there because our periapsis is getting a little uncomfortably low. It's currently at 30 kilometers. Uh, apoapsis is at uh, 199 kilometers. Uh, not terribly bad, honestly. And, well, yeah, looks like we've got, uh, we're set up pretty well. we got plenty of fuel, uh, solid connection with Earth. And we'll definitely have one when we're landing. We'll be facing the sun and Earth when we try to come down here in the lunar seas on our next pass. So I will be setting up that maneuver and uh, getting everything all orchestrated and ready to go. I would really like it if we could land there. So I should probably shoot a little beyond it because it looks like it's close to a biome change. And that would be even better. So we're just going to do one of these. Yes. And uh, try to come down somewhere in this area, because I do believe that's two separate biomes. One here for lunar seas. That's probably Midlands or Lowlands or something along those lines. But uh, that burn will happen in 56 minutes, but also in the next episode. So uh, that's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I do appreciate it, and I'll see all of you in the next one. Uh, until then, see you later.